Welcome to C3 Clang. Welcome this morning, everybody. Welcome and good morning. So good to be in the house of God once again. We have some guests actually from Pakistan uh, that we have among us here that we want to welcome. Please, can you all stand, please? We have pastors and uh, leaders, friends of Pastor Kasi. <laughs> welcome, welcome to our church. Thank you very much. Anybody that's new here, first time? Anybody else? All right, yeah, Anand, sure. Anand, Anand, you did well, Anand. Anand, awesome. Freedom, you're loose, man. What's happened since we were away? <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Wonderful. Today is a, uh, at the end of the service, we're going to give an altar call for prayer if you have needs. But at the same time, we're going to pray for our nation as well. We know that we're going for elections. Uh, on a Wednesday, I think, and so all of us need to combine our, and unite ourselves together for this eventful day, huh? Great, great day. And so we're going to pray right now over our service in, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you for every single person here. We commit into your hands. We know that you have a special word for us. We open our hearts to you. Holy Spirit, move into this place. Move in our hearts. Speak to us. Our ears are open. Our minds are open. Our hearts are open to receive the word, the seed of your word, the seed of your promise that's going to bear fruit, that's going to bring miracles and going to bring breakthroughs in our life. We believe right now we receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray and ask, Amen. 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 Thrive by God's timing. That's the message. Thrive by God's timing. You got it? All right. God has a set time and activity under heaven. We know that. And I want to be in a flow and in spontaneity and in synchronizing with God's timing for my life. What about you? You want that as well, right? For your life. We are entering into one of the most significant uh, life-changing seasons of our life. We need to understand how not to miss our God seasons. All right, we need to keep the rhythm, we need to keep the timing, we need to keep the seasons of God. I'm going to explain how important it is, but let's look at the scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 here. It says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. So you need to understand that everything that happens in your life is connected to a season. Once you get this, everything seems to make sense. So, what is the season of your life? You need to understand the season of your life because by understanding the season, you will know what's the course of action that you should take right now. So it's important. God is the God of timing. Amen? Yes. Absolutely. He created time, although he doesn't live in time, Everything has a rhythm, everything has a set time. So we have already shared, I've mentioned many times that God's strategic, God is sovereign, God is into details, and God is calculated, God is concise, and he operates in seasons and cycles. Cycles are what? Are recurring rounds, just like a wedding band, a wedding ring. What does it symbolize? For some, it means suffering. Eh? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but a ring, is a psych, it represents eternity. Eternity. It's supposed meant to be eternal love. Everything in God is eternal. And then it comes into manifestation at its set time. So, eternal is what? It's cycles. Cycles are seasons, and seasons are set times. So we need to understand when God sets his time, God has a time that he invade into the earth. I mean, Jesus could have come any time, right? But why? 2,000 years ago, because it was God's set time. Okay, you need to understand, when Mary asked Jesus, remember, to do something at a wedding feast when the wine ran out, what did Jesus answer? This is not my time. And look at Mary. Mary responded this way and said, he brushed it aside. Yes, it's not Jesus' time as yet to start working miracles. But you know, this woman is a woman of faith. He just, she turned around to the 
uh, waiters and he said, whatever he says to you, you just do it. <laughs> and he literally, she literally, I mean, pulled something from eternity into the now on earth, replacing man's time with God's time. Amazing woman of faith we can learn from. I want to illustrate what God's cycle or God's time is. In fact, God created this solar system to illustrate his rhythm, rotation, seasons, and cycles. The sun and moon actually helps us to understand the rhythm of God. And woman, all the women here, we all know her about cycles, isn't it? The cycle comes when it comes. Huh? Bicycle, right? Huh? Ah, the moodiness, the tiredness, the pain sometimes comes, whatever it is. Now, not just women need to know about their cycles. Men, you better know about the cycles as well and understand. If not, you're going to have a lot of babies, hey? Huh? This one accident, that one accident. From one became five. The reason a woman has a cycle is for creation and for reproduction. The ability to get pregnant and to bring forth. In the same way, spiritually, we need to see that, that when we get around the seasons, when God releases a fresh word into our congregation or into our lives, what happens? We get pregnant spiritually and we're going to bring forth something that God wants to give birth through you. So we need to know the timing of God's word is very important, you know. It's not just the word of God, it's the timing of the word of God because of the seasons of God so that we can experience God creating something, working something through us at a set time. All right, a set time. So you see, we need to understand that God is not limited by time. He created time, but He doesn't live in time. God has access into every moment of our life. In fact, He knows what you're going to eat before you even think, uh, what should I eat after service? Uh? Where shall we go and have lunch? He already knew what you're going to, what exactly everything that you're going to have uh, decided to do tomorrow. He understands everything because it goes from beginning to the end. It is always present time for God. Now, to God, please put this up and look at the projection here. To God, time is cyclical, meaning it is generation to generation, generational, like a rope. Uh -huh. Now I got a rope. Earlier service, I didn't have one. <laughs> you know, uh, to us, time has a beginning when you're born and the end when you die, right? That's how we see time, but it's not with God, all right? You know, this is the time that you got born into this world and God gave you birth for a purpose. Like a, you need to understand the big, this is the beginning of your purpose. And what happened? You grew and you're two years old. Just imagine you're in a terrible twos. How many of you have got two years old in your house? Oh, we call them the terrible twos because why? They, everything they will say, nope. Eat your food, nope. Sit down, nope. <laughs> Go to bed, nope. Everything is nope, huh? And uh, we rather not call it terrible too. We call it terrific too. La. <laughs> and then you go further. As they grow, they enter into a teen years where they think that they're adult when actually they're not adult. How many teens are here? <laughs> and many times they are, I want my independence. But they're not mature yet. They're not very responsible yet. But, you know, they want to be treated as adults. And as they grow older, you finish college. You go get work, or maybe some of you already dating, looking for a girlfriend, and get, you got married, and start working, and earn your own money, and moved out, and have babies, and that is when you're all stressed out. We have been there, okay? You know, what is it like, shuffling the children back and forth, feeding them, I tell you, just feeding my grandchildren, three of them, just one day already, I'm tired, huh? cooking and putting food for them, cleaning after them. Oh my gosh, a lot of work. I forgot how I managed my three girls. I understand where you are, the season that you are in. And then you, be, what, midlife. Some of you are midlife. Some of you can see you are in midlife because everything on the top go to your middle. You have a, you have a beer belly. That's the midlife. And you got midlife crisis now. Am I still attractive? Or is my wife still look at me? <laughs> <laughs> attractive.
connected to me. Ah, and then as you grow further, you come to the last part of your life where you think, I'm going to retire. I'm going to do nothing, enjoy myself. Then all the grandchildren came along and then you go working again. <laughs> but whatever it is, the last part of your life is not meant to just do nothing. God has given you all the experiences that you have from the beginning so that you can invest into the next generation. Huh, that's God's intention. So for us, life has a beginning and life has the end. That's how we see life, but that's not how God sees life. Huh? God sees timing like that. God sees timing as cyclical, like I said, generation to generation. And so, my children don't have the same struggles that I have to go through. My children is blessed just because they are my children. How good is that? Some of you. <laughs> and and uh, what, because of the decisions I make. The, the things, the right decisions I make in my life goes into them and into my children's children, into the generations to come. So we need to understand this, that life is a circle, cyclical, huh? generation to generation. All right. So some of you look at your life and think, oh, I made it. I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. No, you are not. You didn't come to this place on your own. It's because of your parents, your grandparents, your pastors and leaders. There are people who have invested into your life so that you are where you are today. So there's nothing to be prideful of. In fact, we should be very thankful. Huh? That's why Mother's Day, huh, we don't just remember and appreciate our mother on Mother's Day, but we should appreciate huh, all uh, the, significant, the significant people in our life that is invested into us. Amen? All right. So to God... Timing is cyclical. It's generation to generation. Hallelujah. And we, we are, we're going to walk you through a process of development and we're going to see how life is not starting and finishing as we see it, but life is passing from glory to glory. Just imagine what my great-grandchildren will be doing. They will own the world, I think, <laughs> or own Port Clang. No own clang or whatever okay so we all know that uh, timing is so important let's see from the scripture exodus chapter 9 verse 5 and 6 and the lord here says appointed and the word appointed means the lord put a set time saying tomorrow the lord shall do this in the land and the lord did that thing on the moral. You see, God never misses his divine appointments like we make appointment, break appointment, wait, make appointment, break appointment. But God puts something in there. No man can stop what God has put in his calendar. Do you know that? Yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> man's plans to stop God's plans is not going to work. How many of us have missed our appointments? Maybe some of our appointments are not that important appointments, maybe hair appointment, nail appointments, we can reschedule them again, or doctor's appointment, yes. But what about some appointments that regard to your life and to your livelihood? You better not miss your job interview, right? The time that they tell you to come, meet them, you better not. If you want to have the job, yes? So it's important. So in the same way, God has a set time. You're supposed to show up when you're told to show up at a... Uh, interview in the same way god has set times for us the question is not god are you going to answer my prayer god are you going to fulfill your promise no 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 when god said he will fulfill it it's settled the important question is are you sensitive to the timing of god are you listening discerning the god opportunity that he has set before you are you or do, if you are ignorant you might miss God's opportunities and moments that he has for you. And that's terrible, right? Huh? I wouldn't want to do that. Huh? Then you go one big cycle like the children of Israel. 40 years in the wilderness going round, one big round before they came back to the same place uh, that God has for them. Now, let me take you to the law of beginning. The law of beginning, where is that? Where is the law of beginning? In Genesis. So we look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, and then we're going to have an understanding here. And God said, here in verse 
3 God said let there be light and there was light and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day now did God say the morning and the evening were the first day good no right what does it say the evening and the morning were the first day. See, we're going to, uh, you know, whenever God gives a message, there's always a message behind a message. So we need to understand that, huh? That in everything that God created, there is a message behind. So we understand that God always starts a new beginning, what? In the night time. Not in the morning. He doesn't start early in the morning. He starts in the darkness. Then he brings forth the light. That's why your day really starts at night. Not morning. So if you don't have a good night's sleep, you're going to have a terrible day. So listen to God's rhythm. Some of us got it all wrong. Huh? We think it is the day, that is the, it's a new day, it's the new start of the day. It's really the night. So how you spend your night is going to determine the day, really, the, the second half of the day. All right, and medically, it's, it's proven that night sleep is very important. If you want to have better health, uh, more energy, whatever it is. So in the same way, understand that that is, has always been God's pattern, that he starts with darkness. And if you are in darkness right now, let me tell you, welcome to your new day. That means God is about to break forth his light into your new day. Amen. So good. So God said, let there be light. On the first day, right? He said that. But then, there was no sun. There was no moon until the fourth day. So sometimes we need to walk in the light that God has given to us. We don't see the sun. We don't see the moon. We don't see the substance yet. But we've got to walk in the light. What is the light? The light is the illumination of God's word. You see, God's going to give you a word. God's going to give you a promise. And many times, you've got to hold on to that promise even though you don't see the manifestation of that promise yet. But you will... The light of God will sustain you through the night. And you're just going to keep walking in the light. And, of course, when God said, let there be light, he waited for three days before he created the sun and the moon. So the problem with many of us, while we are waiting in the dark, what do we do? We struggle between flesh and faith and flesh. Oh, God, I believe your word. I declare your word that this is my new season. And next minute, we'll say, why God so long? Why nothing is happening? And then we'll say, God, I believe. And the next minute, oh, why is this? It is so unfair. Why do I have to wait so long? And on and on, we are struggling between faith. And the only person that's going to disqualify you from your destiny is you. Not the devil, not, not the curses, not anybody can put any curse on you. No, it's not going to work. It's you. You're going to believe God's word is settled or you're going to go through doubt and unbelief back and forth. Sometimes, I'll have to say this, that your situation may take years before it's going to manifest. Now, sometimes people come to us with the marriage problems or family problems and they want, they think that God's going to just pray. We're going to pray over them. We just, like, we take the magic wand and then just ding, like fairy godmother, and boom, all the marriage, all will be perfect. Huh? It's not going to, the number of years you have uh, made wrong choices and decisions, it's going to take the number of years probably to recorrect the cost of decisions that you have made, all right? So yes, God's merciful. God can help us to overcome whatever difficulty we have. But sometimes you just got to hold on to that light. When everywhere, everywhere else is dark, you just got to keep putting your foot forward and moving towards that light. Amen? Amen. All right. So let us continue to put our faith in God even before we see the manifestation of our promise. Don't give up on what God has shown you, what God has spoken to you. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up, you know. Just recently, uh, Pastor Joe and I were invited to a date night. We say, ha, huh, it was so good. He has not dated me since he got married. That's how bad. Our dating is watch TV in front, go out for a meal. How many of you? And then after that date night, oh, writing love letter to each other. Wow, how many of you like that? Hey, huh? 
<laughs> and so we are after the, I mean, initially a lot played a lot of games. We have special table. Hundred of them were there, and we invited to be one of the forum speaker. Uh, and uh, they have lots of games and icebreakers and things like that that we did. It was so good. Some of the things were quite uncomfortable, uh, but we are forced to do it because we are the panel speaker, right? <laughs> but it's it's really did a lot of good. You know that. Changes, I see. Ha. And so we say we're going to do the date night for our, our C3, huh? our two of our churches. How, how about that? Yeah. Yes, already done for that? Hey, excellent. All the guys are enthusiastic. Huh? Wow, that's good. Ha. That's very, very... <laughs> so, yeah, I have to say that because sometimes we look at situations like, well, there's no change. Uh, and you get, you feel like, you know, you, you feel defeated. Uh, but God has an appointed time before He manifests uh, the promise. And you need to know God set time for you. Uh, you know, God's able to turn things around overnight. He does. He's a miracle worker. He can. And you don't know when He's going to say, that's the last day of your famine. That's the last day of you crying. He's going to turn your weeping into joy. So we don't need to just hang on there, whatever, however hard, whatever you're going through. Because with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. Amen. So God knows that all your trials, all your tears is not ever wasted. Every pain that you go through has a purpose. It's not over. It's not over. Turn to your neighbor and say, it is not over. It is not over. Believe that. Amen. <laughs> now, what season or time are you in now? What season or time are you in? You've got to know what season you are in. Because if you don't, then you don't know what's the right decision to do. It's important because it helps you to have a plan of action. So seasons, like I said, is important to get God. You need to know your time and you need to know what is your time for. Turn to your neighbor and tell, it is your time. It's time. No, it's your time. It's time. But what is that time for? Ask them. What is that time for? Hmm? Let me illustrate now with Moses' life. Moses was 120 years old when he finally died. Wow. He lived a very, very long life. And he has got three very significant seasons of his life. Huh? It's all in what, 40s? 40, 40, 40. Now, the number 40 speaks of testing and process. How do I know? Because numbers are important to God as well. Huh? You look at the 40 days that Jesus fasted when he was tempted. Remember? The children of Israel, how many years did they wander in the wilderness? 40 years where they were tested as well. So 40 it's a number of process, a number of testing. So let's learn from Moses, right? That the three significant parts. The first part, Moses' first 40 years was marked by a time of investment and insight. Yes. God invested into the life of Moses for the first 40 years. He was a miracle child. You all know how he escaped the death when a mother put him in a basket and float him down the river. And the Pharaoh's daughter picked him up and took him home. And he was raised in the palace of Egypt. Can you imagine? He was a Hebrew by birth, but he was an Egyptian by education. So God has invested God inside of, raised him up in palace because God wants to put the right knowledge, the right experience and the right insight into Moses' life. Moses was groomed for a purpose that wasn't revealed to him until later. So in the same way, some of us, we may not understand, why my life in the past has to be so tough? God, allow your life to be tough. Now, as I begin to also look at my own life, like, you know, when I was born, the time my dad was, uh, during the, after the Japanese occupation, he came into a lot of wealth as a merchant, and he started buying a lot of houses we had made to take care of us. Can you imagine those days uh, to have made? He has a car, he drives us around, and then right after my dad and mom divorced we went down to almost poverty where we didn't have money 
basically it's because my, my mom is also addicted to gambling and were days that we didn't even know where our food is going to come from. That's how we had to struggle growing up. And sometimes maybe that's the kind of life that you, you know, you look at some other, other person and say, why this? Life is so easy for them. Almost like handed a silver platter. They have everything they need. Why do I have to suffer like that in my life? You know, God has invested things inside of you, even the hardship that you've gone through. It's meant to mold you to be what you are today. So never underestimate. And to hindsight, I look at it when we first pioneered, I mean, <laughs> pioneered this church. We had nothing, absolutely nothing. And as we recall how God has uh, helped us to pioneer this church and the, the hardship that we went through, I believe that, you know, I was able to go through that hardship because of the way I was shaped growing up, struggling, very independent, very resourceful, having to huh, find money to give tuition or to, to do something to earn some sort of money. So in the same way, don't look at your life and judge by your past and say, oh, what, what's that? God has every, every pain and every hardship that you've gone through has a purpose in your life. Amen. Amen. All right. So this is the first part of Moses' life that we see. And uh, of course, in the transition, Moses was uh, trying to fulfill God's will for his life. He knew that God is calling to be the deliverer of uh, his uh, nation, Israel. He knew he wasn't an Egyptian. He was a Jew. And so he tried to, what? Do it his way. His understanding, his knowledge, and he failed, right? He killed an Egyptian, and then he has to bury his mistake in the sand. I don't know, sand, Egypt, bury in the sand. The wind's going to blow. People are going to see the dead body, lah. We always like bury, hide, hide our mistakes, hide our failures. Do you know that God doesn't want you to hide your mistakes of the past season? Because every pain or every mistake, every failure that you have is meant to help you to grow, to mature. So we need to learn from our mistakes and grow in every season. And maybe through your mistake, you can help somebody else. All right? So how many of us have made bad mistakes? Can I see your hand? Bad, big, you've blown it. Look around, look around, see your hands. Huh? If you look around, almost every one of us, huh? If you didn't put your hand, it means you are a big liar, I'm telling you. <laughs> your wife is there looking, Ravi. <laughs> no, no, Ravi is saying, two hands now, he's waving. <laughs> okay, so, it's the grace of God. God's going to come in in our life. In, in, all that, we're all messed up. We're all not perfect. We all have blown it, but the grace of God, He shows us where we have went wrong, and then He helps us to learn from the mistakes and to mature. Amen? Amen. So, say again to your neighbor, it's time. But what is it time for? What is it time for? Ah. Let's see. The second 40 years of Moses' life was marked by a time of process and preparation. Moses, you know, after he made a mistake, what did he do? He ran to Midian, the desert, and he lived there. He married there for 40 years. He worked as a shepherd for his father-in-law, Jethro. His life was so monotonous and so tedious. Imagine he was trained in Egypt. That means, like today, modern day, means maybe he has got, don't know how many PhD, lah. he's so intellectual. Suddenly now, he's a shepherd counting sheep. Do you know shepherds? It's a very boring life. You are in the desert. Do you see anybody? No. You're not having te tarik with your friend or chit chat. Wow, so nice, huh? Just talk about life. No, no, no. It's very, very boring. All you hear is bad, 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 dumb sheep. And all you do every day is just count the number of sheep. Make sure you, none of your sheep is uh, lost. Huh? or eaten by some lion or some animal or things like that. So that is Moses' life for 40 years. Can you imagine? Some of you, you are saying the same thing. I'm so bored with my job la, or with my life. It's so tedious. When am I ever going to stop doing this monotonous thing? Don't ever stop because God is doing something that you cannot see that's happening in your life. The monotony that you're going through right now is really developing or producing that character and discipline and consistency in your life. Amen. 
Nobody sees, but God sees. God sees how many of you have been serving Him faithfully behind the scene. God sees how you're working in the office. God sees your faithfulness and God is the one that's going to reward you. He's going to promote you. All right? And He's never ever going to shortchange you whatever you are going. So look at that life. What happened to Moses? While he was doing the usual every day, one day suddenly he saw the burning bush burning up. But it was not consumed. And you know, that was the day he graduated. Whew! No more shepherd. But now he became the shepherd of the nation. From shepherding sheep to shepherding the nation of Israel. Wow, look at that. You know, we, we all want the glamour, the stage, the promotion there. But we forget the process that you have to go through before you come to that place that God has chosen to position you for. All right? So look at that. Huh. So now he's, now he's so, he's so powerful. Everything he say, everything he declare before the Pharaoh and before the children of Israel, God backed him up. Yeah. That's the man he has. So never underestimate what you're going through now. You know, when we were at the conference, John Gray was saying that how, you know, today John Gray is like the latest, lah, huh? <laughs> uh, man of God, everyone, everybody wants to hear him. Then he was very open about how he, he first started. He was just a youth pastor. He said, nobody sees. He was just pastoring a handful of youth. And uh, to earn more money, he even cleaned the church to support himself. And today, he's on the spotlight and people say, wow, you're so lucky. Uh, how you became so famous? Uh? I say, you don't see the process, the pain. And the tears that I went through years and years and years to come to this. God knows. God sees all that you have gone through. Amen. Amen. And, and it's time. God will put you forward and promote you and give you the platform. Okay. Amen. So that's why through all the process, God wants to develop in you that humility. That's what he wants. You know, can you imagine... And sometimes we say, oh God, when are you going to start promoting me? Lah? And God said, wait, 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 wait. You're not ready yet. There are some things that I still need to adjust your character. I need to adjust your heart. Because if I allow you to go there too soon, you're going to mess it up. So thank God for the delays in your life. Amen. Because if you reach there too soon, it will destroy you. Rather than help you. So thank God, God knows. His timing is always perfect. Trust Him. So know that. And so let's see. Alright? Turn to your neighbor again. It's time. What is it time for? What is it time for? That's the question you need to ask. The final 40 years of Moses' life is marked by a time of placement and power. Alright. How many of us want to be in the right place, doing the right things? Huh? Uh, we all want that, right? We all want to be in the right place, saying, doing the right things. How many of you know that you are really in the right place now? One day, lah, I'll be in the right place. No, no, no. You're in the right place. God knows. Even a process that you're going through is the right place that God's placed you. Don't doubt that. Don't try to pull yourself out of what he's going through, like I said. That's a process, like I said, that God allows us to go, go through. And look here, now, when a promotion comes, let me tell you, whoo, I'm so blessed. Promotion, see, God's blessing me. See, look, everybody. Blessing. You're blessed and put in a position for a reason. God's waiting for you to be ready to be in that position, but because... In that position, you are going to bless others. That's the reason why God bless you. Not for yourself. It's so that you are positioned to be a blessing to others. So there are people who are waiting for you to be in that position. So I'm saying that it's, you know, it's not, ah, yeah, it doesn't matter lah, whether I got promotion or not, whether I come to the place. It is. The people around there just waiting for you to step up to the place that God's called you because if you don't, you don't step up to the place, they are not going to be blessed because you are not in the position that God's called you to be. 
So we all need to go into the process and come to the place of placement where God's, where you, you're going to come to that place of authority where you pray and things will happen. God, Holy Spirit will show up. And like Moses, he, has, he was operating supernaturally and it will amaze people. It will amaze people. Let me tell you, in the same way, some of you are working in a very hostile environment. Huh? The people accept you, but they can't understand you. They can't make you up. Huh? God's given you a special set of skills to be able to work in a hostile environment. I, I, I tell you, when I hear the stories of some of you, the office that you have to work in, the politics that you have to deal with, the bosses and the peer pressure everywhere that you go, I tell you, it is God's. God's put you there. Do you know you're not just smart, you are anointed. They can't understand. No? They, they accept you, but they can't understand. Hey, this person is uh, different. Uh, why? Uh? Because God's hand is upon you. Some of you may be restless and you say, ah, when is God going to take me out of this job? Ah, I'm just tired of this job. Like, you know? Well, that feeling, God's put that inside of you because God's saying that this is not, this is not the end. This is only a season. And God's going to bring you to a place, a placement, a place of power where you're going to uh, be elevated. And I believe God's people are going to be elevated because in the end times, because God wants his glory to be seen and to be reflected through you. So we pray for the prosperity of God's people. Amen? Amen. That all of you are prospering in your business, in your workplace, everything. But do you know what? The process of pain and tears will kill the pride that's in you. And that's what God wants that to happen. As long as there's a lot of pride inside, God can't promote you yet. Yeah? God hates the proud. He puts down the proud and he elevates the humble. All right. So let God, let the process kill that pride that's inside of us so that we have, be humble, we'll be sensitive to minister to other people. Praise God. And that's what happened to Moses. Moses came to the place. Got to be a humble person to lead this big nation lah. Constantly complaining, grumbling, complaining, grumbling. No matter how many times they see the miracles of God, they are always complaining. Huh? To be a leader of that great nation. Well, he's a, uh, that's why God said Moses is a man, a meek man. Meek. <laughs> meek man. Because the process has humbled him and helped him to be the leader that God's called him to be. Every one of us got to be clear now. When is your appointed time and season? You need to know when is that time. And you need to know what you should do. So when is that appointed time? May I ask you? Is it sowing time or is it harvest time? You got to know. If you have been sowing, you will know that it's time to reap the harvest and you'll be anticipating it, ready for the harvest. If you have not sown anything, nothing is going to happen. You've got to start sowing. You understand? When it's time for sowing, you need to keep sowing because the harvest will come. Uh -huh. Some people think that automatically everything is going to happen. No. Okay, that's very important. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. Let's. Yeah, that's another verse. Okay, let me give you uh, this. How can you walk through your process? How to walk through the time of development? Okay? Three things you need to know. All right, put it up. Areas of development, the first thing that you need to understand is contemplate the processes of God. Look through your life, the process that God's brought you through. Why you have the family you have? My family are uh, really crazy. La. Maybe God you put you in a crazy family so you, know, you can work with crazy people in your office. <laughs> Whatever it is, the process, look at the process. All right, everything, even the brokenness in your life, God allows that so that you will be broken and so that you will have the compassion to minister to people. You see that? So look at the processes in your life. Okay? Then second thing is, have communion with God. Mean, do you want to function in optimum? How many of us want to reach our full potential? We do want, right? But do you know that God wants us 
to be walking closely with him, to be understanding his voice and understanding his ways so that we won't miss his opportunity that he has for you. We won't blow it big time. So we need to know how to discern God's voice for us. Third thing is, in a process of development, you need to have contentment. Contentment in a place that God has put you there in this time, in a position God has put you there. And don't compare with others. Don't try to be others. Just be yourself. And know that God has a plan and purpose for your life. Huh? Don't look, why others are so fast? Huh? Why they are overtaking me? What, what? Be content. I'm not talking about financially, that's all. I'm talking about you in God's kingdom plan. Okay? So these are the things that we need to use. So no. What is your time? What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? What you need to do? So good for this message because during the presence conference, every year they will collect a miracle offering. We didn't have very much lah, huh? offering to sow really, but we want to give something. And then they ask you, when you sow the offering, you also believe God for which, whatever miracle that you want to believe God. So we, Pastor Joe and myself, we look at each other. And during the whole presence conference, you know, God spoke to us that we are going to uh, uh, plant more churches. And uh, like, this seems like a far-fetched. Lah, huh? So how are we going to plant more churches? We're already, already so stretched already, uh, far stretch. How are we going to do that? Uh, and then, pastor is looking at me, China, yeah, yeah, Jason wants to start the church in China, yeah, and I said, India, yeah, okay, Indian Chinese, so we have India and China, lah. we should start one in India and one in China, fair square, since I'm Chinese and he's Indian, <laughs> no, but honestly, we were saying, yeah, we believe that there will be a, a church that we're going to start, so we sold a miracle offering, then we came back home, I'm telling you, the <laughs> sowing, the miracle offering, we came back home, the moment we stepped into Malaysia, Wow, so many calls coming back. Huh? South Africa is calling us. We want to bring our church under you. South Africa, mine, we didn't even think about that. Now India is calling us. China, Jason is calling us. Now after that, Thailand, out of the blue, uh, a church that I was uh, ministering at um, a, a number of years ago started calling me and said, I want to meet you. I want to talk to you. Wow, so many things are happening. Mm, no, your season. Pastor Joe and I, we are in our golden years, lah, I got to say. Huh? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So you better pay your price first, okay? Huh? No, no, wow, golden years. I want to quickly get to the golden years. Lah. Golden years. I believe that these are the years that we're going to live a legacy, spiritual legacy. One of the things that we want is that we want to be humble, we want to have more wisdom, we want to have more knowledge. Uh, uh, you know, there's so much that we want to continue to learn. And most of all, we want to raise up leaders for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So you decide, contemplate what is your season. Contemplate the processes. Why God put this person there? Why God put that person? Why did you meet that person? Why are you in that situation? Contemplate. Don't just every day just go to work, come back from work, go to work. Contemplate your life. Yeah. There's a reason for everything. Are you? And wait on God and listen to the voice of God. What should you be doing this season? My final verse, then I close. This is my final verse. This is beautiful. Psalms 1 verse 3, it says here, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Ha -ha. Do you know God's planted you? Stay where you're planted. Don't uproot yourself and say, oh, let's, let's go somewhere else. You know, nothing seems to be happening here. Let maybe go elsewhere. Plant yourself in the house of God. Plant yourself. And the Bible says you'll be planted by the rivers of living water. Rivers of, of water. And not, how many rivers is that? It's not just one river. It didn't say a river. It said rivers. Huh? That means God's river is going to flow through your life. That's multiple rivers. Maybe multiple source of income that's going to, God's going to bless you. Believe God for multiple levels of anointing, multiple levels of authority that God's going to release into your life. Believe God for that. And then he promised you that he's going to bring forth its fruit when? In its season. 
and whose leaves shall not wither. Your leaves are not going to dry up and fall off. And whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. So if you're not doing anything, there's nothing. Whatever you do, so whatever is, what is it God you want me to do? Do it. Do it. Because if zero, you times anything, it still be zero. So God saying, do something. Like what we did. We did, we gave a miracle offering. Whatever little we had, <laughs> we gave. And then the moment we step back, we step back into our season. Whoo! God just opened doors for us. We didn't even ask for it. God like give us shockers like now we've got so many things to think about the next this new season. All these churches that want to be linked to us, that want to come under us, we never ask for them. They come chasing us. So God knows your season. Are you ready? Let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When it's your time, it's our season. Nothing can stop us. Do you know what? Let's stand together, shall we? Hallelujah. You know that you are very close to your breakthrough when you are hit the hardest. Huh? When the warfare is the most intense, you are really close. He's trying to mess up your marriage. He's trying to mess up your family. He's trying to mess up with your finances. You know you are very close to a breakthrough. Like I said, when you're in darkness, that's when a breakthrough is going to happen. Light is going to come forth. Yes? So in the same way, I don't know who you are. You maybe say, God, Pastor, you said it again and again. Just like. God is reminding you again. All right? Don't cancel your harvest with your negative words. Don't cancel your harvest and say, nothing is happening. Why, God, you're so slow? Why is it so long? Just keep speaking the word. Keep declaring the word. Speak the word, not according to your circumstances, but, but uh, don't be moved by your circumstances. Be moved by God's word. And you will see the breakthroughs come into your life. Are we ready for the breakthrough in our life? Yes? We are ready that we need to do something. What's the something that God's telling you to do this season? Think about it. Maybe sowing an offering. Maybe starting a ministry, getting involved in, in uh, building the kingdom of God in an area that God is asking you to connect with certain people, whatever it is, all right? Or whatever job that you are in, to continue to be faithful and consistent in the job that God's called you to do. Whatever it is, you need to know your season. Yeah. Amen. Let's raise our hands towards God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.